Good evening and uh, welcome to tonight's meeting. Today is July the 16th, it's Tuesday. Time is now 6 p.m. 2019. The regular meeting of the City Council will now come to order. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Jack, would you please lead us? Jack, would you please I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, please. Bonato? Here. Goodall? Here. Griego? Lopez? Mate? Here. Miles? Here. Rico? Here. Item two, approval of the agenda. Council have any changes? Motion, please. So moved. Second. Second. All roll, please. Donato? Yes. Goodall? Yes. Mate? Yes. Miles? Yes. Rico? Yes. Uh, policy items, staff reports, we don't have any. Item four, petitions or communications, oral or written. Uh, do we have anybody signed up? Okay, 4A, we have uh, Harriet Bourgeois from SCRT, and uh, she called me up and asked if we didn't have a whole lot of people to speak, to give her about seven minutes, so I'm going to allow her seven minutes. Harriet? presenting tonight are in your packet and I'm going to be using acronyms to save time if you haven't had time to read your packet you may have some questions so we'll we'll forge in SERT was chosen as one of five Colorado communities for year-round DCI support because of what SERT brings to the area unique and diverse benefits <coughs> and 17 years of consistent success as an economic engine. Tonight, in five minutes, or maybe a couple more, <laughs> I will bring you up to date with the Challenge Studio impact on Trinidad and also make an, an important ask so SCRT can meet DCI's expectations. In your packet, you will see the nine steps outlined in the challenge report that promise not only to increase the capacity of organizations and institutions in our community, but eventually reach a broader circumference that spans the entire Southeast region. Yikes. Okay. <laughs> Tonight, I will focus on the first two steps of this challenge. Step one, stabilize SERT's funding model. To run our year-round programming, our budget has to be finalized in January, and our professional contracts for performance rights and professional employees are signed by February. The board? I don't have a PowerPoint, we're talking performing arts. I'd rather you not all come up here. That's not necessary. No. I just let you do the presentation. Oh, dear. It's my visual. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. I am up to March. In early March, the SCRT board sent a letter to council requesting support in the amount of $35,000. We were turned down. We took that challenge. But we are now at the point where we've exhausted all possible means for filling that $35,000 deficit until fall grants and corporate donations come in. We have a cash flow gap right now 
which we have to fill to meet our next payroll. We are asking you to help us with $35,000 of support. That amount represents 14% of our yearly budget. The other 86% of our budget we raise and put back into the local economy along with an estimated over $1 million every year of value-added ripple effect spending as measured by the Arts and Economic Prosperity Calculator. Challenge step two, SCRT needs to share its DCI resources and promote collaborations in Trinidad. I am proud to try to introduce some of our current, current partners. Thank you, Board. <laughs> if these people will wave. Corazon to Trinidad Creative District, Executive Director Marilyn Loosler. The other next partner, Dana Crawford and Urban Neighborhood Investments being represented tonight by local representative Chris Smith in the corner. The Trinidad Music Association, President Sharon Sorensen. Trinidad School District number one, and most specifically Trinidad Middle School, represented by Vice Principal Michael Blanau. There he is, thank you. Mount San Rafael Hospital, represented by CEO John Tucker. Thanks, John. Trinidad History Museum, I didn't, there she is, represented by <laughs> Kirby Stokes, thank you. And Trinidad State Junior College, represented by President Rhonda Eppers, thank you. These institutions and nonprofits are critically important components of our city. Consider what this town would be right now without any one of them. One final detail for you to consider in making your decision about supporting SERT. 17 jobs, career level jobs that SERT brings to our economy. Young professionals whom we recruit from across the nation and those not in rehearsal, thank you. <laughs> Next year, this job pool will at least double. This is not the time to lose SCRT. Please, find a way to support us now with 35K so we can continue our work. Please, if you want SCRT to stay alive for Trinidad, I ask anyone in the audience to stand if you want SERT to survive past next payroll. Thank you. And CRT, 16 years of it. Please understand the honesty and the sincerity of our request at this critical time. Do you have any questions about the DCI challenge and what is on our plate to accomplish for training? Typically, we don't take you know, anything from the council at this point, but I do have one question. Thank you. You're asking us for the 35000 mm -hmm. How soon would you need that? Quite frankly, uh, we have a payroll to meet on Friday, and um, we sent uh, a last request to every person who's ever bought a ticket or donated to SCRT when we were not able to find funding that we thought we would receive in our summer quarter, spring and summer. That's where the bottom fell out. Fall is looking good. And within two days, we raised over $15,000, which was really rewarding. But we still have that $35,000 gap uh, that I can't figure out how to get, although we are 
um, in the process of working with local banks and Chaffa for some loans. Uh, that doesn't come in immediately. That takes some time. But we are pursuing loans. You don't want to get further in debt. Uh, but the plan going forward, uh, the $30,000 worth of consultants, uh, business consultants that DCI is providing us, and they've been coming to town, we've been holding meetings here, and are helping so many of the other organizations in town. The future is so bright. I started sending out investment proposals yesterday to the tune of $300,000 a proposal. It's all in your packets, that plan. It's just like, we can't lose this in this gap. So I didn't know what else to do but to come back and um, ask if there's a way, even if you could loan us the money. Uh, we're good for it. We just don't. I am not going to let these young performers not get paid. No, just for our purposes, for us, we all know that probably the only pool of money that we could get money from would probably be from the marijuana funding, but that would not be until we have a resolution that comes before us. We or, think we have uh, a cap on that, too. So, yeah. I know. so we'll have to spell that be something to get consideration. Now, it's a very short question, just to clarify uh, the mayor's question. How much do you need to make your payroll? Um, we have a payroll this week, and we have a payroll next week. And those two payroll, payrolls will be close to $30,000. And then how many more $15,000? Then, then, then we're pretty much... Oh, pretty it's, a lot, it's very front-loaded, is what you're saying. I'm sorry, what? It's front-loaded for the season? Because what happens in August? Oh, oh, then, then we're fine. Then, okay, so it's front loaded payroll. Yes, because we have to pay all of our royalty contracts in February before we Okay, can so payroll is broader, I understand. Right, so, yeah. and now our major expenses are payroll, and the company is here and they're working, um, and we just don't know where to squeeze. Um, it's so rare for a company like ours, a theater company that does professional theater year-round to survive in a small rural community, we all know what it costs to bring in top-ranked entertainers and provide housing. Um, but what comes back into the economy and the fact that we're still alive after 17 years, but the new model does is totally different. The new model includes a budget in the bank a year ahead and hiring people who are professional at fundraising. So this is this is the lowest point. We're so close. And if there's any way, if there's any emergency money, if there's any way that I, I wouldn't ask for thirty-five thousand okay. if I didn't this will need put that. you a year ahead. No, no, no. This okay. will put us through the month of July. All right, and that's all you need for the rest of the year? Oh, no, there's more money coming in. Um, there are grants that we've okay, written. There's you. grant cycles. Right. And there's also some corporate money that comes in in fall. You know, the quarters. Um, it was just this period where we didn't get the anticipated funding that we thought we would. I'll talk to the, uh, Greg, and he'll be getting back to you. I sure appreciate it. Can I just ask a question, Mr. Mayor? One thing, uh, I noticed on the revenue sources and the revenue data that in 2016, ticket sales were 47,350, 21%. And in 2017, it went to 42,398, 23%. And then all of a sudden, in 2018, it dropped to 37, 68. Well, here's what's happening. Our audiences grow every year, but the economy in our local community has not grown. And so we have never raised ticket prices, but we now have a million different, that's exaggeration, ticket deals. So we, are, we have larger audiences, but we're make, making less money on ticket sales. And that's just, it, it's not just in our town. It, the only place that theater tickets are skyrocketing, 
rocketing are in the major cities and we're finding so many theaters like ours are having to continue to low, lower the prices because the small rural communities are not rebounding. So that's what that shows. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Got my stuff. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Item 4B, Main Street Board, 4th of July event, recap and fireworks. We have a couple of representatives. We have a lot of representatives. <laughs> <laughs> we have many of them in our Number. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. So we have we have you know we had several with the with the SCRT. So I'd like to only have probably maybe two of you here. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we just wanted to recap the Fourth of July. It was great success. We had more people than we've ever had before, and the fireworks were amazing. They went about 25 minutes. And they were just, I've been to a lot of big cities for fireworks and have never seen anything better than, than we had here. Truly amazing. We've received so many compliments. The citizens of Trinidad were just ecstatic about the fireworks, the baseball game, the event, and the fact that they could pretty much watch them from the confines of their home. So. Truly, and, and I know a lot of you know, back in the day when we were doing fireworks, you could shoot a cannon down Main Street and you wouldn't hit a soul. Everybody <coughs> left town. People are coming to Trinidad. I know Cy wanted to discuss what was going on with the hotel world. 100% sold out to hotels that weekend. Uh, I think yeah. it's important to do a comparison study, so okay. I'll just walk up here for a minute. <laughs> but a comparison study is that prior to 25 years prior to us, or the, the years that we haven't done any um, celebration in the downtown area, and I can bring up that record and, and deliver that to city council if you'd like, actually the hotels in town were somewhere between 70 and 80%. Um, as soon as we started engaging and going ahead and doing the fireworks again in the last four years, we were sold out. This fireworks, we probably could have easily sold another 150 rooms in Trinidad. It was it was exhaustive to my staff answering phones saying we don't have any more rooms. Um, and 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 I think one of the reasons is that for years we didn't have um, we didn't have fireworks or celebration. People would go to Raton. We all know that there's a whole caravan that went or went to other places. <coughs> now that there's a celebration here, the local people just call their elders and say, hey, come to Trinidad because we have this big celebration going on. So without a doubt, I can do comparison figures. I'm thinking probably uh, 650 room nights in Trinidad, 20% increase. And that is 130 rooms, everybody's spending an extra, you know, $300, $400 a night, you know, you're being here for two nights because they're celebrating their time here in Trinidad. You know, it's an easily income into Trinidad for $100,000. Without a multiplier, it's so needed. Yeah, yeah. Right. I just want to congratulate the board because they, everybody on the board worked really, really hard. And we had such a fun day from 11 o'clock when we started the water parade all the way till 10, 15, 10, 30 True. at night. So we were really tired, but we're happy to do it again just so long as we can get fireworks back. So that's <laughs> one of the reasons we're here. Yes. We would like to fireworks were very nice. They're beautiful. They're they, very they nice. really were. Um, you know, I have to say, the city staff, Dan Rossetti, head of the Parks Department, not only that day, I mean, he is our right arm, and he is there, and he's watching fireworks overnight, and, and even not on that day, Dan Rossetti's out there at the park with us, with the trigger season, you know, we'll have 30 dates out at the ballpark. And I'm there right now, that's why I'm not in uniform. <laughs> Please come out, we've got a double header tonight, we're playing seven baseball games in five days this week, so. Um, anyway, such a crucial part of what we do is having him available and having him at our disposal. He called guys in on the next morning, helped us get cleaned up, because that was one of the things. It's a holiday. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even get community service workers on a holiday. Please know. So we did the best we could with the volunteers that we had. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Joe was out there on that side of it. Rusty was on the grandstand side of it, and both could attest to how busy it was. And my staff counted; they cross hatched a thousand people coming through that gate. So, um, and that doesn't include staff, volunteers, people on the ground, baseball teams, and everyone associated with it. So, really, there was probably closer to twelve hundred people. On the field. Thank you. I was just going to say, I thought it was spectacular. My little granddaughter thought it was spectacular. But I, uh, I did want to remind the council and the city manager or whoever and the staff that, you know, our contract is up with the professional mm -hmm. fire groups down there. And I don't know how we go about that, renewing that contract. We, just, we better get those guys renewed as soon as we can. Right? That was, that was spectacular. Well, you're right. Those things do. Things. I know last, it wasn't last year, but the last year was the fireworks. Like, yeah, we had the so we had, I thought yeah. maybe we had one more year, but I guess I'm wrong. Okay. Yeah, we've been, we've been in the midst that. of this contract for four years, and <clears throat> okay. one year we had to sit out. Right. Uh, I, as far as I know, we've had good luck with that company for the most part. They had a mistake the second year, but they admitted that to us and, you know, really did the best they could for us mm -hmm. in the areas. So, um, I just want to thank the council. I want to thank um, the board for all of the support. Um, it's changed the face of how the triggers, you know, operate on the 4th of July. It really is a boost for us as well that we need. Um, you know, everybody loves the triggers, but, you know, I don't see 300 people a night out at the stadium to sustain the project. So, um, big days like that are really important to us, so we appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good job, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item 5, Consent Agenda Approval. 5A Approval of Special Meeting Minutes of June the 24th, 2019, and Regular Meeting Minutes of July the 2nd, 2019. Item B, reappointment of Ruben Vigil to the Trinidad Housing Authority, and I believe Ruben is here tonight. He showed up tonight. <laughs> Item C, appointment of City Manager Greg Fund and Greg Sun to fill the unexpired uh, term of Michelle Miles on the ARPA Board of Directors. <clears throat> Item D, approval of the bills to the tune of $1,569,572.79. Item E, approval of payroll June the 3rd, July the 13th, 2019 through July the 26th, 2019, and July 27th, 2019 through August 9th, 2019, the tune of $345,523.27. Could I have a motion, please? Motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Okay. I do have one uh, minor change, not change, but correction to that. Uh, in there, there's a P and Z uh, item I was trying to find here. I can't remember exactly where it's at, but it showed a July 19th date. Uh, it should have been today's date, but July the 16th. Is that correct? I'm not sure what you're right. Right. Oh, it's in the minutes. It's in the minutes, yeah. Oh. Oh. I thought it should have shown that the date should have been the 16th. The motion like the changes. Uh, like I said, we have a first and a second. Uh, all vote, please. Bonato? Yes. Goodall? Yes. Mate? Yes. Miles? Yes. Rico? Yes. <coughs> Item six, public hearings, consideration of ordinance, or amending actions uh, sections in chapter 14, the plan is the plan is zoning, article five, flood damage prevention of the Code of City of Trinidad. Call out to conform with new flood insurance study and flood insurance rate maps issued by FEMA. Hearing is now open. Tom, do you have anything to add to the public hearing? Mr. Mayor, I do not at this point. It was pretty much as written in the first reading. And that's just the, the adoption of the new maps and the new language that we put in four or five different places in the uh, code just to bring ourselves, our papers up to date. So we can provide insurance for the residents. So. Council, have any questions? Mr. Bernardo? No, sir. No. 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 Okay. Anyone in this audience to speak for or against the ordinance uh, change? Or against? Hearings closed. Second reading of an ordinance amending sections in Chapter 14. 
Planning and Zoning, Article 5, Flood Damage Prevention of the Code of the City of Trinidad, Colorado, to conform with new flood insurance study and flood insurance maps rates issued by FEMA. We have a motion for, please. So moved. A second. Second. Any other dis discussion? None call a vote? Renato? Yes. Good all? Yes. <clears throat> Retain? Yes. Miles? Yes. Rico? Yes. We have no unfinished business, which was item 7. On to item 8, <coughs> miscellaneous business. 8A, approval of a waiver of 50% of the uh, payment in lieu of taxes required by the Trinidad Housing Authority. We have a motion, please. So moved. We have a second. Second. Any discussion? For clarification, this is one year, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, is there any, I didn't see any written materials. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it it's like there going to be a letter signed with them? Or? Is that written by Mr. Porter? No, I don't think so. Unless you want something. Do you think it's buttoned down? I guess it's pretty simple. It's well, we, with the, we'll probably send a letter. I don't think it will be. It's not okay, then contract. it's up to us to implement. Yeah, this is something to do. Okay. So if I remember right, like I said, it'd be one year, uh, and I think it was be subject to renewal uh, after that one year. That's correct. But that's not an automatic renewal. Right, it's not an automatic renewal, that's correct. Yeah. So then we're not so talking to future renewal, councils. Right. Exactly. exactly. Correct. I, I think the way you wrote it is you would change it from time to time. I don't know if it's going to be or the future. I thought it was going to be auto renewal. No, no, unless we change it. So. I think we would be Well, unless changed by the council. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. Any other discussion? Oh, wait, 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 I'm confused. I thought. And it, I, my memory could be wrong, but I thought we talked about it being that 50%. Correct. Until such time as council council intercedes and decides That's to change it. Yeah. So, it, it, so it's not just a one-year term. It's 50%. It's a rolling. For as many years until council acts on it. Right. Exactly. Right. It's a rolling That's one year, is what I'm saying. So that one year, they could change that. Yeah, in the, yeah. the year that it comes up, they could. Yeah. And do we have a regular schedule for these years? Or is it just to be determined? It would be to you. Up to the other call for it comes up. How would we go about having a notification? Well, yeah. Do we have a tickler or something? Yeah, am, I, am I the only one that thinks no. that's a little bit vague? No, I think a notification to say, okay, this is up, any changes, no, then it keeps going. I think at least that much should be done. Is that well, it doesn't, it doesn't. The vague, somewhat unstructured discussion at the beginning is what got us into this consideration. No, I think it was over interpreting what was said. Right, what it was. Okay. It wasn't vague. All right. Well, that's what we discussed the last time. We can change it. I understand your point. And I can go either <coughs> way if you feel strongly about it. Well, and I, I don't want to be an obstruction to things. I think that it's important to us, to everybody, if we had greater clarification and it's somewhat of a vague presentation to say until we decide to change our mind, you know, and, and if we had like a regular routine or regular schedule, it would be reviewed. And I know we didn't want to encumber future councils to say it would be improved or revisited every two years, but without that kind of definition, it does leave everyone somewhat um, oh, it could fall between the cracks. There's no question, but that is what we talked about. Okay. But we I can change. Talk. No, we can change it. Mm -hmm. I, you know. Well, does anyone else agree with that position? Yeah. yeah it should be more structured. I'm like you. Either way, I think well, once everyone falls off that's on to this council now, at some point that will happen. Then what future council will they have guidelines to remind them that this needs to be changed? And it it, it does change. leave a loophole. Well, I, I think the biggest thing that we need to understand is that, you know, whatever date that, you know, we sign this agreement, then the same date next year is when it will come off that. You know, right. and that would be that the would time be the trigger. That would be the trigger. That's not a bad the idea. Time. That would be the time for whichever way this thing I, I agree, but that's somewhere, it's my position that tonight, when we vote on this, it, needs, it should be specified so that we're not I think the mayor is saying the same thing. The trigger would be the would termination of the one year. Right. In other words, the trigger for the right. reminder to reconsider would happen if we didn't vote. Okay. 
that on my grip? <laughs> Somewhat. <laughs> so, so the fixed percent payment low taxes would come due and uh, for any changes the year, whenever this date that we sign this agreement, the following year, then if anything comes up that any changes want to occur, we would do it at that point in time. Do you want it a positive vote every year? Sure. Let's just do it. Yeah, let's just do it. All right. Any further discussion? No, sir. I'll vote, please. Donato? Yes. Bedoff? Yes. McSain? As amended by discussion, yes. Miles? Yes, as amended by discussion. Rico? Yes. Item 8B, first reading of an ordinance amending Chapter 7, Finance and Taxation, 7-47, 1-1, of the Code of the City of Trinidad, Colorado, for the purpose of revising requirements of membership in the Tourism Board of the City of Trinidad, Colorado, setting a hearing date for consideration of said ordinance to August the 6th, 6 p.m., 2019. Could I have someone to introduce, please? I will introduce. Okay. Could I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. A discussion on the matter. All vote, please. Donato? Yes. Pedro? Yes. McSain? Yes. Miles? Yes. Rico? Yes. Mm -hmm. Item E, Trinidad Community Foundation grant allegation approval. Is someone here? Laura? Tom? First of all, could I have a motion, please? So moved. Second? Second. Do you have discussion? Um, you know, we thank you for the opportunity to again be able to review the city grants. Uh, this year we had six applicants that applied for the grants. And so because we had fewer, we had more money that we were able to uh, give out <coughs> to the different uh, nonprofits. Um, all of these nonprofits are very, they really work on less than a string. And they are all very deserving. They truly do a lot in the community with the monies that they get from the city. Um, we appreciate the ability to work with you and thank you for the ability to, to uh, help out and to collaborate with this and um, are ready to answer any questions. And John has all the information. He can answer all questions. <laughs> John, why don't you go ahead and give us maybe the recipients and the Right, so, so as Laura just mentioned, we had six six applicants, is that right? Yes. Uh, the first is the Ar Arts Council of Trinidad. The second, I think the second year they received funding for their Make Art Fair. They only requested $700 out of their $1,100 project costs. So we were able to give them a little bit more money. Uh, the Mitchell Museum funded their request for $2,000. Um, Earth Mountain Educational Farm. Uh, lots of great programs out there. I think they've been a perennial recipient, applicant and recipient, so we re recommend funding their entire $2,000. Hometown Holidays, another one that the city has uh, sponsored for several years, $2,000. Purgatory Watershed Partnership. I can't remember, Laura, is this a new one? Uh, we did last year, I believe, that was the first year that we had gone ahead and, and approved them for uh, city grant funds. And this is the second year. Right. They requested fourteen seventy-five twenty-five, and we were recommending funding of $1,500 of their money, nearly $9,200 project, and SCRT, uh, a couple thousand dollars for them. <coughs> Questions from council? How does the number of applicants this year compare with previous years? Seems like we had 14 last year, last or was year, it 16? We had 14 last year, I believe, is what I was remembering. Okay. And so, so I don't know why there were fewer. Yeah, we I advertised all the same ways question. we did. Yeah. Was anyone not awarded a... Uh, uh, you know, it there? wasn't, and, and uh, there were actually two of them that we were able to give them more. The, as uh, you were saying, as we were able to go ahead and to give the purgatory the watershed more than they had requested. <coughs> And also the uh, art well, art fair. No, 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 but last year were there oh, applicants yes. who were not awarded <laughs> contract, uh, Several. an award, mm -hmm. and perhaps that's what they chose. Right. Thank you. Sure. And the number of applicants dropped. What what do you attribute that to? We don't have any idea, other than Mr. Maybe Mr. Matei's comment that several folks didn't get funded last year, so maybe they didn't bother to apply this year. But we advertised it all the same as we have yeah. the previous year. Okay. 
Thank you. Good job. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. There's no further discussion. Call the vote, please. Bonato. Yes. Goodall. Yes. McKay. Yes. Miles. Yes. 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 <clears throat> Item D, resolution determining that an election is required to consider one or more ballot issues and to elect mayor, the mayor and three city council members, and that such election should be held as a coordinated election. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Yeah. Any discussion? Sure. None? Rusty? No, sir. No. We have some deadlines to get things done. Yeah. Yeah. Call vote, please. Renato? Yes. Goodall? Yes. Mateus? Yes. Miles? Yes. Rico? Yes. <coughs> Item E, first reading of an ordinance submitting a proposed Home Rule Charter Amendment to the voters of the City of Trinidad at the regular municipal, elec municipal election to be held on Tuesday, November the 5th, 2019, which would designate the City of Trinidad Municipal Landfill as an enterprise and set a hearing date for consideration of said ordinance to August the 6th, 6 p.m., 2019. Need someone to introduce, please? Oh, a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Padra? Do you yes. have anything on that that you want to give us any information? Well, actually, what we've been. Uh, Greg, do you have anything on that? But, um, this is, I think it was pointed out about a year ago, all of our enterprise funds are listed in the charter, and so this would just list this proposal. Okay. Any discussion next? <coughs> Did you get any feedback from anyone after the, we discussed this in public? I haven't heard anything. Else. Nothing at all. Okay. Cheryl's still opposed? <coughs> Probably. Okay. I just wondered if you'd swear it out. You know, in, in, your report, in your report, it, or in the report, it said that uh, some of the, uh, uh, the directors, uh, some of the directors opposed. Any particular reasons why? Well, you heard last week when Cheryl. Well, sure. was it only Cheryl, or were there others? Because according to the information that was given to us, sound like other directors might have been in opposition. It, it was. There were just some questions. It wasn't. It wasn't like there was a vote or anything. Okay. It was the subject of an e-team discussion, so I think that kind of needs to remain confidential. Okay. Yeah. That's good. <coughs> Thank you. There's no further discussion. Call vote. Bonato. Yes. Goodall. Yes. Mitzay. Yes. Miles. Yes. Rico. Yes. Item F, for read, first reading of an ordinance to extend the 1% 1 1 sales tax originally authorized by vote of the people on November the 4th, 1980, and extended by vote of the people in 1991, 1996, 2002, 2008, and 2014, and to provide for dedication of the revenue from such tax to capital projects, purchases, purchases and maintenance, and set in a hearing for considering hearing date for consideration of said ordinance to August the 6th at 6 p.m. 2019. Need someone to introduce, please. I will. Okay. We have a motion. So moved. We have a second. Second. Go ahead. Audra, you want to give us, give us any additional information on that? Do you have anything additional to give to us? <laughs> <laughs> not, not especially. Um, as you know, our capital sales tax actually expires at the end of next year. Um, we're actually taking this to the voters one year early um, so that we can be prepared to plan <coughs> on future years and how we spend that capital money should the voters approve it. We hope that they will. So we kept this, at, this is four years? Six. Six, six, six years, that's right. Six. So we kept it six, all right. Thank you, Adam. There's no further discussion, call vote, please. Bonato? Yes. Goodall? Yes. Okay. Yes. Miles? Yes. Rico? Yes. Item 8G, under miscellaneous business, first reading of an ordinance submitting to the voters in the city of Trinidad to extend the 1% sales tax originally authorized by vote of the people on November the 14th, November the 4th, 1980, and extended by vote of the people in 1991, 1996, 2002, 2008, and 2014, and to provide for dedication the revenue from such sales tax to capital projects, purchases, and maintenance, and setting hearing date for consideration of said ordinance to August the 6th, 6 p.m., 2019. Have someone to introduce, please. I will introduce. Okay, we have a motion. So moved. Second. Yes, sir. 
Okay. Any additional information, Audra? <laughs> uh, so this just submits the question. Okay. Call vote, please. <clears throat> Bernardo? Yes. Goodall? Yes. Matei? Yes. Miles? Yes. Rico? Yes. On to item nine, council reports. Mr. Matei? Nothing, sir. Thank you. Okay. I have a couple of yes. Um, we met with uh, Greg and I and Mike and uh, Rick Rigo, the general manager of the Arkansas River Power Authority. We met um, last week and we talked about the status. He updated us. Um, as you may recall, the state of affairs is that we've been negotiating with Tri-State for some time. Uh, squabble broke out between La Junta and Lamar. La Junta not wanting to go with Tri-State. Lamar very much wanting to go with Tri-State. Everyone else kind of reading the wind a little bit. We've always been on the tri-state bandwagon, as I think was clear the majority of the, a clear majority of the of board members were. And then legislation came up, which called into question um, how much it's gonna cost to run any fossil fuels, even a clean, relatively clean fossil fuels like combined, combined cycle natural gas. Um, we talked to, uh, we sent a letter to Tri-State saying, can you clarify what the projection of rates are going to be under this legislation? We got an answer back saying, we can't, we don't have enough information yet. So where we stand now is that I think most communities are saying, we got to resolve this resolution before we proceed with Tri-State. On the other hand, Lamar just wants to go very only ahead. And so we're kind of ca caught in this, um, Quicksand, would that be a good word, Greg? Yeah, very much. So anyway, that's where we stand. I just want to give you an update. Um, I think we need to find out more. Lamar has hired a very expensive consult, consult to try and go through all this. I think their agenda is they just don't want to be in our plan anymore. And part of the tri-state arrangement would be the dissolution of our plan. We'd all go our separate ways working with tri-state. Um, I just want to make a comment. It's you know I've been on the board since September of 2012. You know, it passed very quickly in the consent agenda item, which is absolutely appropriate. But I just want to thank everyone involved, especially staff, for all the support and working through some really thorny issues since 2012. And Greg, I wish you the best of luck. And I wish you lots of good windshield time going out to, going out to Holly next month. <laughs> you know, I, you, you mentioned that. The group has talked about maybe dissolving or something. Everybody going their separate ways. That's well, that's the, that's the way tri-state would work: is that we would liquidate ARPA, and then we would sign power contracts individually. The way it would work is ARPA would be signed directly with tri-state, but the others would be working through Springfield. And that was always part of the proposal. But wasn't that what you know the, some of that debt that we've been talking about back? No, on? no. Uh, tri-state was going to assume all of that. Okay. And then, and, charge it back to us. and then charge it back to us, but at a rate that still was lower and projected to be lower than what we projected in the market. Have you checked any, any pitfalls on any of the, any of the stuff like going that direction? Has, have you no, we're not going, that's where we were going to go. We were okay. on the verge of going. Then La Junta threw a spanner in the works and slowed it down, and perhaps for the good, because then legislation came up which is not favorable to Tri-State as far as we can tell. So perhaps it was good that it was slowed down. Like I said, I, I talked to her here, and I, I talked to the uh, uh, mayor of Lamar this morning, yeah. and they're talking about Guzman and his, their interpretation of what Guzman is. So it was uh -huh. Well, you know, Guzman is not, I, I can't really talk about it, right. but they're, they're more fish in the pond than Guzman, a lot more fish in the pond than Guzman. Okay. Okay. Rusty. So we had. Uh, oh, wait, I have a little bit more. <laughs> 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 um, Pat Fletcher today asked me to join the one cent sales tax task force to figure out how we get this thing passed. Tara was on it the last time. Um, anyway, she asked me to, to take whatever Tara's vacancy on that. So I agreed to do it unless anyone else would like to raise their hand. You have a little bit of experience yeah. if you want to do it instead of me, that would be fine. Yeah. Just to let you know, what I do is if council hopefully we'll will come back on me here, but I called Pat Fletcher and asked her if she would be willing oh, to okay. head, head, head that up. And uh, that was just over the weekend. And That's I, a good felt, I felt yeah. that it was necessary because they did it the last time and she has the group of people that she uh, that helped her last time, so uh, she accepted and I think yeah. she told me. 
She's very enthusiastic. Yeah. She's just, uh, <laughs> oh, she's, she's just a killer. Um, so anyway, there's that. Unless anyone else would like to do it, I would be glad to relinquish that ball, which is too important, so I'm willing to do it. My first okay. reaction was no. Um, the other thing is I'd like to uh, introduce Martin Smith. I think I spoke to Martin, raise your hand. Uh, I think I spoke to council about this about a month or six weeks ago. Um, Martin is in town doing an article for the Los Angeles Times about <coughs> Trinidad. It's got initially had the concept of an angle about how is Trinidad remembering that part of its history. And then we started, Martin and I had a discussion and talked about it or just getting around to commemorating Sister Blandina. But anyway, he's doing a, a general piece about Trinidad. Certainly there's going to be some focus on the, the history of transgenderism and what it's meant to Trinidad, what Trinidad is meant to that. Um, anyway, we took a tour of the trolley today. We uh, had board members from the Main Street Board and from the Creative District and a handful of other people. Um, and the article is going to be very prominent. It's going to be uh, a page one, the page one human interest article. Is that a good way of describing it, Martin? Yeah. yeah. Martin, by the way, is the former senior editor of the Los Angeles Times uh, Sunday Magazine. And then he was the editor of the Orange Coast, the Orange Coast, which is basically Orange County, which is a huge population center. It's their 5280. You know, up in Denver. So anyway, welcome, Martin. Um, if anyone would like to chat with Martin after the meeting, I'm sure he'd be he'd love to talk to you, especially since it looks like we're ending fairly early. Um, Martin, is there anything you wanted to say about? No, thank you for the warm welcome and the hospitality today. Right? Great. Uh, I was here last spring, spent about a week uh, working on a book, and um, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for the hospitality. Thank you. Sure. And. Oh, the other thing is, I've been spending a great deal of time, along with uh, the mayor, talking about taking our discussions about the creative district and the oversight of the uh, Space to Create project further and refining it further. And, you know, problems come out of the woodworks a little bit. I don't want to talk about the direction that we're going in yet, but it might be isolating the 501c3 uh, from the rest of the organization. We're working through that as we speak. I think Greg is circulating draft ordinance. I've had uh, lots of conference calls with Marilyn, Pat, and Mary, uh, Jeff, the whole book. So uh, I think that's moving along. Mm -hmm. And that's what we got. Okay. I couldn't agree more. I, I would be not willing to take that position as helping on the one Sent, but I would be glad to assist in any way. That's I great. Could. Thank you. Um, any help that you need on that, it's a big deal. And I think with the help of staff that we can get out and, and really just blast to the public what projects have been done and what future projects, I think that's going to be key for getting this through. So we had Parks and Rec meeting last night. Um, the big topic for them was the board um, pamphlets, their guidelines which they operate under, and I think they have some misconception on, they said, well, I'm a public citizen, even though I sit on this board, and the way I read this is that we can't comment on our personal feelings on social media. I said, I think you're misunderstanding, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. I said, and, and you're acting on a capacity as Parks and Rec Board, please don't express your personal opinions, because you're representing the city. We're not telling you as a private citizen when you wish to express your position or have something to say, you're free to do so. Is that not correct? More or less, if you're if they're posting on that Facebook page, they need to act like a reporter. Correct. And on their on on their page, Parks and Rec. But I said when they're acting as just a private citizen, they're free to express their okay. And that's what I told them. I think we got that cleared up. Less is that correct? Well, I would say that it's hard to separate yourself from being a private citizen, you know, if you're a board member, that is if you're commenting on board business, no one is going to differentiate between, you know, a, a, a board member as a private citizen or as a board member, board member. So I would just say no one is really going to make that, uh, is really going to make that distinction, I don't think. So I would say that board members, like I shouldn't be, of course I'm not a board member, but I shouldn't be commenting on city business and saying, 
well, this is less private citizen commenting, not less city attorney. You just, you really can't, you, you can say whatever you want to in your private life, but I would just say a board member should refrain from commenting on board business unless they're acting like a reporter and just kind of regurgitating facts and not not opining. Does that make I, sense? It does, but I don't think they're referring to board business or anything to do with Parks and Rec. They they thought they were held to, well, I'm on this um, board. Now I can't form a personal opinion in public and comment on any right, anything. Right, no. no. And, and I told them that's not true. It's Absolutely. not like yeah, you're yeah. not on a quasi-judicial board right. like city council or planning and zoning. It's a, right. it's a whole different set of rules. So I will refer them. If they ever have any questions, please contact you if they That'd be uh, great. have questions. Um, I, would think, I would think that the context of the posting or the discussion ought to govern them as to what they ought to be saying. Exactly. Right. And I don't think they anything were, that as a hint suggests that they're responding in an official capacity, don't do it. Exactly, but and if that's what I told about whether they like blue cards or red cards, who cares? <laughs> that's, and I think that's where a winner, if, if they were for or against the president or, any, or political matters or something else, not anything referring to parks and rec board right. business. Okay. And, and they had a question on needing to post work sessions, and I told them any meeting that they had, they had to post, no matter what. Good so answer. Any question, I, I, I am going to refer them back if they have any doubt, just to please contact you, especially Peggy. So, You're great, thank you. Because she seems to always have the most questions. Yeah. All right. Um, they had a big discussion on the rack cards from, I don't remember what the group was that met recently and they decided they wanted to do rack cards for information. They come up with a good idea on having an app or something on the web page but in this age with cell phones that people could scan that would bring up what's happening in Trinidad. Do we have any such thing going on like that? There was some discussion among the Main Street Board. They heard about something like that that was available at a conference they went to in Kansas City and I, it just seemed like it dropped. I don't know if they just started doing something else but I haven't heard <coughs> anything about it since then. Can I, can I comment on that? Yeah. We did have a discussion several years ago when Jay and Eric were, you know, more involved in Trinidad mm -hmm. about having a Trinidad app. And I think the consensus at that time was, you know, a visitor to Trinidad isn't going to take the trouble to go to the app store to download a Trinidad app. So my only comment would be, it would have to be like a broader app where you could just plug in the zip code and then find out what was going on. But I think it's a great idea. I think so too. Like we have the bulletin board down here posting if there would be like the barcode deal, something, some just like what's happening in Trinidad. You would just scan it and it would bring up what's going on. I thought what a unique idea or a way for people that's walking around town to find out the events that are happening. So there was some discussion there. The signage for the Wormhole Loop, Marty um, from, said something about they were just waiting on a W-9 or something so that a payment could be issued or something. Um, have the signs been paid for or are they here yet or do we know, Tom? Um, if I may, the, the W-9 would indicate that they have not been ordered. We have to have a W-9 from the, fact, the company to put them in the system as a vendor and then the order would proceed after that. So we haven't designed everything, we just haven't. I wasn't aware that we hadn't gotten received the W9 yet. So Marty had some questions, and if he hadn't contacted you, maybe if there's something yeah. you could reach out or yeah, something, and they had some questions. It, it should be. If, if we're at that point, it'll be very soon. Yes, sir. Um, that's pretty much the sum of it. Okay, thank you. The rest, I'd, I'd like to see if we can get together and get back on our meeting schedule, Mr. Sund, and go over some other stuff. Thank you. Mine, mine is just short and sweet. About, I guess, about a month, month and a half ago, uh, I contacted Mr. Slim about doing a striking over there on First Street by the quarter zone over there because there was so much traffic. People would block there, park there, and coming down Santa Fe Trail and turn on First Street was pretty dangerous. But uh, so I had a few phone calls. And I talked to Mr. Sun about it, and uh, today I had quite a few phone calls and saying how happy they were, the older people in Portugal, and also uh, 
the other people there. That was kind of a dangerous thing, and uh, they just wanted me to recognize Mr. Beach and Mr. Sun for doing that. I know it's a yellow line, which is probably better, because I, I try to get a red line there for a fire touch or something like that, but Mr. Sun and staff and, and Tom came up with the yellow line there, and, it, and it's really freed up a lot of you know, the older people trying to come out of that drive there by Corazon and come on on First Street. So it freed it up pretty nice. I just wanted to say thank you from them to the staff and Mr. Beach. Thank you very much, Mr. Sun. That's all I have. Uh, I got this letter I got it last year, and I don't know if the city has ever participated in the county for it, fair where they purchase, you know, a hog or a rabbit, <laughs> chicken or something. <laughs> the, Mr. Bernard, do you know in the Past has they ever done, you ever done anything like that? We have never. I don't think so. That well, what do you do? Well, but, exactly. well, what you do is there's two ways to purchase. You can outright purchase it, and then you yeah. have to, you know, take care of yourself, or you can buy what you do as a floor plan. And what they do is they set a set price, and you pay the difference, and it goes back to the the, the, the child, whatever it is, and then they sell it or whatever they do. But they do get somebody in the end. So I don't. I, think so. I don't know if that is that something that we can do. If you want to check into it, we can have a discussion because we still have We certain... could buy something outright. That would be no different than buying anything else. I don't know what we would do for the whole hog. Well, you know, the best, thing, the best way to go would be the floor plan, where you would pay the difference of what the, you know, they got this floor plan deal, and you pay the difference, but the, you know, the individual keeps the animal, and then they sell it outright to somebody else. Just the way of I just want the donation type kids to the four I understand that, but at first blush, I question the appropriateness of that sort of an action from a governing body. Um, in thought and in spirit, it probably makes good sense. It's community participation and that sort of thing, but how does that distinguish us from buying into all kinds of other projects? Mm -hmm. well, what, if, what if we had uh, a paper art? Oh, uh, that's what I was saying. If we bought it outright and had a big party, you know, and you made a barbecue, yeah. celebrating yeah. Labor Day, it could be. I know a guy that has giant smokers who just come right in and throw that whole hog right in. It's no, so then it would be a community event as opposed to just a dispersal. Right. Yeah, I, 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 we would be using public funds. I, I just don't know. It just seems. I just bring this up for I'm that out of research. There's probably a good reason we've not ever done that. Yeah. Or that it's not ever been done. That's not to say that it's a bad idea. I'm just suggesting that it, it seems at first blush to be somewhat awkward. <laughs> Check into that. And we, you know, we have a little bit of time. I, I just bring it up tonight because I just thought this letter here recently. It's, it's a different amount of money. But, uh, I'm not sure it's any different than what we get the space to create that in directly. You know, what if, what if we were to buy that and, and use it at a community town cleanup function with the barbecue afterwards to clean up the whole town as a community involvement project with the barbecue afterwards? Can we just buy the process? <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, who's going to slaughter the hog? I, got, well, we'll do, I, I do my own animals oh, every year. Yeah, I have someone that does all that. Yeah, we okay. can have Audra do that. <laughs> yeah, they they do be processing. They were company. That's <laughs> right. Wild game only. Yeah. <laughs> we can call it wild game. We call it, you know, whatever we want. It's wild game. <laughs> <boy. laughs> Let me go on. I just bring that up a few times. Last week, I attended the Southwest Cheap Amtrak meeting, and uh, we just hired an assistant director to uh, our director. Uh, he actually started yesterday, uh, so he's on board. Uh, so far, to date, the bill grant has raised, uh, it's a little over $9 million now, because I talked to uh, Rick Klein this morning, but as of this report, it was eight, they have raised $8,239,000. So uh, it's moving along in the right direction so that the bill grant can, and we're the, uh, what do you call it, Greg? <coughs> we're the lead applicant. We're the lead applicant, thank you. So that's moving in the right direction. Uh, we also are continuing to talk about a 2020 special district ballot, a ballot for the front range for uh, transportation, for rail transportation, so that might, uh, like I said, we're continuing. Uh, discussion on that. Uh, so far, from what I understand, that they have completed through all of the uh, grants that we've received, 
312 continuous miles of new rail is what they uh, they put in. Uh, there will be a public survey that will be coming out in the near future, probably in the next month, uh, asking questions about how the general public uh, feels about uh, rail, passenger rail. Uh, I saw we gave they gave us a report. Uh, CEO Anderson from Amtrak, he gave a report to the United States Senate uh, in, last month. Very disturbing in the fact that they he is <coughs> continuing to try to promote uh, passenger rail and all the dollars to the East Coast. I mean, it's, it was a ten-page document that you know that we received. <coughs> And everything is talking about uh, trying to shove everything toward the East Coast. And nothing was even said in this discussion about the Southwest Chief. Uh, the one thing that we have going for us, however, is uh, we have all of our national legislators from the area, from New Mexico, Kansas, and Colorado, have all joined forces, and you've seen the letter in the past, the, to, to support the Southwest Chief. Because <coughs> we don't want to see a discontinuance of, of that passenger rail. At the same time, we had one of our commission members, Jim Sugi, he also gave a report to the uh, Senate Commerce and Transportation Committee on the 26th, and he uh, <coughs> pretty much was talking about the opposite, is how uh, the Southwest Chief and the Front Range Rail will impact uh, the entire state of Colorado. So it was a pretty good note, it was about 10 pages long as well. So I think that uh, there was some, some contradictory there. It seemed like the, the, this committee was in agreement with what he was saying, uh, but who knows where it will go from here. We're, we're continuing to pound payment to see if we can to make sure that it stays uh, you know, active in this area. So it's, uh, it's really concerning that we really still at this time. Um, um, Mr. Mayor, yes. If I could just interrupt you one minute. In your opinion, you know, we've been talking about this for a long time now. And you know, people would need to talk and talk and talk until the uh, sun goes down, but uh, you know, there's no action that's taking place. I would like to know, you know, do you think right now that this is going to take over a year of time to get this situated? Is it going to be seven more months down the line? And do you think it might be a year down the line? Or, because, you know, you, everybody could talk about things, but to get things going and try to get with and all this kind of stuff. Do you think this is going to drag off? Or? It is, because it takes a long time to, each year we go in for, like we have this bill grant right now. Yeah. And uh, I forget what the total amount is that we're going after. It's 20, mm -hmm. I forget what. It's over 25. It's over 25 million. So you've got to do that on a yearly basis. And we've had a, uh, the first Tiger grant was in 2000 and I think 15 or 16. And then we had another Tiger grant and then we recently got that recent time grant and now we're going to a bill grant. We have Christie grants and other grants that are out there. Plus we've also received that fifty million dollars that was allocated by a Congress uh, that is still out there too so for supporting the Southwest Chief. In Mr. Riorda's own words I remember when he was talking to one of the CEOs from Amtrak and he was standing right there and he said the whole Amtrak's got deep pockets because they bring your wallet. And uh, so my concern is, how does Amtrak, does Amtrak contribute, to, are they contributing yes, they money to the, to the Southwest Chiefs themselves? Yeah, they, uh, they contributed on the last uh, uh, grant that we had, I think it was $3 million. $3 million, yeah, okay. And then of course the state seems to win a million dollars. And of course we did as a community, yeah. all the various all communities put in like $12,500. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what's happening again this time around. But I, you know, to answer your question, it, it is going to be a long-term process uh, because it not only involves the Southwest Chief coming from Chicago, you know, into Los Angeles, into Lahana, to here, and then south. Uh, the big thing is, is they want to take the, the Southwest Chief in Lahana and go to Pueblo, and now they're actually talking about doing it. That's what they call through car. And then what happened there is then it'll go to Colorado Springs. Uh, back to Pueblo, back to Lahana, and then back to Trinidad. So I asked him the other day, why not come straight through? And he said the reason is, is because people would be picking up the train from Colorado Springs and Pueblo, and maybe wanting to go to Chicago. So they would take them back to Lahana, get the train there, and go, go to the East Coast. 
So that's the reason for the through car process. So Amtrak can't disclose their pool of blood on this, or they can't? No, they can't. Yeah. Yeah. See, right now, we taxpayers contribute about 6% of Amtrak's right. dollars. Right. So it's a big dollar amount that we contribute. So it is going to take a long time because the other thing that we're, that we're talking about is uh, Cheyenne or uh, Wyoming wants in on this as well. So it's going to be probably a good 10, 15 year process. It's going to take some time. The other thing, important. Uh, no, it's important. Uh, the other thing too is I just want to mention is uh, last month when uh, uh, Randy Grauberger came down and gave that uh, report at the uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, I took him down to the train station down here, and I've had a few people ask me why they don't have any benches down there for people to sit. So I took him down there and we talked. So he went back and he talked to Amtrak. And uh, they are going, to, I'm not sure if it's Amtrak or if it's CDOT, they're going to allocate $300,000 for benches. What? <laughs> <laughs> $300,000 <laughs> for, for benches, but also an enclosed uh, oh, building, uh, shelter. shelter to be that they can move Jeez. down the road. Yeah. Oh, so there's a there's a potential. Yeah, so, uh, but anyway, that, that's, a, that's a, and I guess CDOT is going, C -Dot is going to, to, to do that. Uh, went to the tourism uh, board meeting, and uh, they received two requests for funding. For funding, one was the Art Cartopia, and the Art Mitchell Museum. Uh, so I think they they approved both of those. Uh, they also talked. There's a government conference. Governor's Conference for Tourism uh, toward uh, the end of September. And um, I plan to probably go to that as well. Uh, I also went today to the Los Angeles County Commissioner's uh, meeting. And the reason why I went is uh, Trust for Public Lands and Nature Conservancy gave an update to them on the Fisher Street project. So, Greg? Um, the, uh, Submitting the bill grant was a good experience. It's, it shows how how much improved the federal government is getting in terms of electronic submissions of things. Um, we haven't used the the grants.gov and there's another one called sam.gov that, that all that are needed in order to apply for federal grants and we hadn't used them for a while. And I really want to thank Ruth Wilson and Cheryl Navarrete for their help in getting us access to that again. They did so in less than a day. It was amazing. And by doing that, we were able to give the grant writer access last Wednesday, which was about the earliest he'd ever gotten it. Sometimes it's hours before the grant was due. So he, he was uh, pretty happy that, he, uh, that, that we uh, initiated this and got him the information necessary to get the grant in. I was on the road and he asked to uh, have a letter written, <coughs> can't remember what it was right now, but I wrote the letter and just because of using uh, my computer I was able to pull it up in PDF and actually sign it on the screen and send it into him with a signed document, so it was kind of cool. And then yesterday with the help of Grand Lake, I used their Wi-Fi to submit the grant. <laughs> so, <laughs> So it was a whole bunch of people coming together. So I want to thank, I really thank them for their help too and get me access to Wi-Fi yesterday afternoon. Also, we, Mike Valentine and I attended the DOLA hearing this morning in Rifle and testified on the sewer transmission line grant and I think it went pretty well. We, uh, <coughs> We talked about all of the things that are going on with this, with the sewer line and how it affects the city and what the costs are and um, the age, everything that was significant with the project answered all of their questions and hopefully we'll get a grant. And what was that dollar amount for? We're asking for a million dollars. Um, we still don't have approval on, on, on this from uh, the railroad, but it feels like we're getting really close. Every time they ask us to change something, we change it quickly and get it back to them. And so we've been responsive. The most recent one that they've asked for is that we reroute the line to the south and then make it follow where our gas line, the gas and water line is, and then come back up Linden a little bit and meet the line.
mine again. And the reason they're asking for that is there is a railroad spur out in the middle of the yard, and they claim it's still active, but we can't figure out that for the life of us what it goes to. It just goes out into the middle of there and stops. So we don't know who it's active to, and they won't tell us. So it's, uh, that, that's become a little bit of a frustration. How long is it? Oh, is it one of those to sidetrack a train? I don't think so. Okay. And it doesn't have a stop block, so if the train didn't stop perfectly, it, it would fall off. Any yeah. So that's all I have. Uh, and you just reminded me of something. Uh, last week, like I said, when I, when I was at the Southwest Chief meeting, uh, I mentioned to uh, Commissioner Ritterhauser, he is the representative from Burlington Northern Santa Fe about the uh, railroad crossing on uh, uh, Linden Street and how bad a shape it's in. And he was going to talk to the BNSF to see if they could do something about that. We did do some catching on there for the city street portrait, so that should help. But I, I did mention that to him, so he can get yeah. some done. So it is bad. My turn. Yes, your turn. Okay, Mayor, thank you, members of council. Now, I first wanted to remind everybody of the, the meeting on Thursday, executive session right, on, on Thursday. Um, what time? Four thirty. The other thing I want to report on is that I am allowed to now say that the city of Trinidad is going to be filing a petition for cert. I say cert because that's an abbreviation for certiorari, which I think every lawyer pronounces differently. But anyway, we will be filing a petition for cert with the United States Supreme Court on the case of Hamer v. Trinidad. And that is after the adverse ruling by the whole panel, the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals. Um, it's interesting too, though, because our attorneys in that matter have also been order to, to comply with a briefing schedule in district court. So they're kind of having to, to prepare the matter in district court for a rehearing while also preparing the petition for, um, for certiorari. So um, I just want to make sure you know that that is happening. Only a small percentage of those um, petitions are granted. Certainly no assurance that, that that's going to happen. But that is something that our attorneys are going to be pursuing the other, uh, the Marty Nathan and, and her people. Any questions on that? If they get turned down from the Supreme Court, uh, then what happens? Then exactly, that's it. Then we will have availed ourselves of all potential appellate remedies, at least for this round. And that is they will relitigate in U.S. District Court, and if there are any appellate issues there, then we can appeal again, but because it'll be a retrial. It'll be a retrial and, and that will happen. But for this round and for the, the decision um, by the U.S. District Court Judge, Judge um, Wong, I believe it's pronounced, you know, it's, pretty, it's spelled W-A-N-G, that decision was then appealed, and then appe appealed to the three-judge panel of the 10th Circuit Court of Appeals then the whole panel now going on a petition to serve to the U.S. Supreme Court, that will have, we will have exhausted our appellate remedies on that case. And now I'm repeating myself. The only other thing I'm going to say is I would be absolutely derelict in my duties if I didn't comment on Michelle Miles as an ARPA board member. Thank you. And what you have done and what you have um, meant to the city. I mean, when I first started here in 2012, shortly after you were uh, elected to city council by your peers, when you were first put on, you immediately took on the ARPA duties. And, <clears throat> excuse me, you navigated through some of the most complex litigation I have ever seen. Multiple U.S. District Court lawsuits Sincora comes to mind. I mean, all the stuff that was going on. That was the beginning of your time on ARPA and everything you did, everything you did to help this city. So 
It's a huge loss. And yeah. the refinancing with Goldman, too. Wow, fantastic. But, anyway, go ahead. but the, <laughs> absolutely, the <laughs> city <laughs> of Trinidad. <laughs> exactly. It's called a new stock. The city of Trinidad owes you a huge set of gratitude. As, as does ARPA. Right. But, but no one has been better represented on the ARPA board because of you, ma'am. So, you know, I have talked to a couple of um, people that have been on that commission as well, and they speak very highly of you. So, we um, made actually the Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. So, thank you again for all that they've done. Thank you. Know, they've done a great job. Okay. I have a lot of encouragement. If we buy a pig. It just occurred to me that uh, Governor Biden has challenged Governor yeah. Michelle Lujan Grisham over who has better chili, yeah. Lower Hatch, and he wants to have a cook-off in Trinidad. In Trinidad. Party on, Garth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a smoked pig with green chili. Furthermore, I think Marilyn's talked to you, hasn't mm -hmm. she? Well, about the possibility of doing a, I'm sure she talked to you. About the possible, I think it's Paul Manini's idea of doing an entertainment district night. Yeah, the cook -off. and then we need that would to be keep that in mind that we may be hosting some sort of a yeah, uh, national interest state and regional, regional competition here. here. And it'll, it'll be a lot of fun. We'll have to do something on here. It's close on Main Street. Mm -hmm. Because we will get people from Denver, people from oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That. that would be huge. <laughs> I think it'd be a lot of fun. Bring the best chili. Bring the best chili. <laughs> That's it. Anything else, Chris? That's all I'll be a judge. I will volunteer to Motion judge. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. Second. Paul vote. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Yes.